I stood for elections in the 2010 corporation election saying, let me start at the third tier of governance. There is a local governance, a state government, and the central gov government. So I said, let me start at the bottom. And at that bottom, I stood for elections. The uh, you know political parties did everything. They had a Meenakshi uh, you know, candidate just above my name so that people would mix up their names and put it. They made the constituency that I was going to stand in and where I had some traction, they made it backward class so that I couldn't stand. So I said, the first two stones they have thrown at me, I will not get phased out by it. I will stand for elections and I stood for elections. <coughs> but I got only 835 votes. I believe 835 people actually trusted in me that I would be able to deliver. Today, I need 50,000 votes. And I entreat that each one of you will actually get me at least 100 votes, which means I should get 5,000 or 6,000 votes from this forum. It's not difficult. It is very easy. Even if you're not living within the constituency that I live, I'm sure you will find friends. I'm sure you have Facebook friends, email friends, friends from your various things. So this is the constituency that I'm standing. And 28 constituencies there are in Bangalore. So 28 constituencies, you surely remember Armani Nagara, Sadashiv Nagar, Indian Institute of Science, Malleshwaram, Subramanian Nagara, all these areas. Find some friend of yours, tell them that you need to vote. You also need to come and say that you will come over the weekend and walk the streets with me. If you walk the streets with me, there are a few advantages. Yes, of course, you'll land up with a tan, but you will land up with a slimmer waistline because when you walk, the exercise gets done without any problem. Two, you will actually find friends for yourself. I had a neighbor, a friend of mine who came all the way from Indiana <coughs> and he said, I must introduce you to my classmates, my uh, engineering classmates. And guess what? Where was the classmate living? Right next to my house the next building and I was not aware of it. So there is something that is missing because we don't connect with the society that we are living and invariably it always happens that your next door neighbor is not known to you. The reason I want the neighbor to be known to you, the neighborhood to be known to you is that it requires a safety factor. If you know everybody who lives down your street, one, you know the professions they belong to, you know the people who are there, you know who will come to you for assistance, you will know if there is a stranger entering your street and you will know that this is a strange person and that you need to. And if you need any help in the middle of the night and you know these five, ten people around, you call up one person, it's the web sort of a this thing, you will call up one person because that's in time of danger, you can only call up one person. That one person will call up 10 people and there will be 10 people who will come out and stand by you. <coughs> Otherwise, it's usually, you know, that little curtain that is pulled to the side and you are watching the fun from behind and you don't, you think that you will not be the one that is affected. So somewhere, the society has lost its oneness. We need to become that tight broom that will change the society, that will sweep clean the society and make sure that we are all equally uh, you know, empowered, equally capable of dealing with every, so, uh, every problem that we are facing. And if so, leave the crab attitude behind and let the whole society rise so that we have a greater level of competence for all of us. We are really the privileged class. We're really the 2% of the population that pays income tax. But what about it? If the 98% is not doing well, the 2% is also not doing well. Everything is going wrong for us. The water is wrong. The food is wrong. The food is contaminated. You know, every little niche of our life is slowly deteriorating and we think that we are insulated. We're really not insulated. If in 10 years time the garbage is not dealt with correctly, then we will not have good food. And even if Hema Malini turns around and says, wash the food with RO water, can the pesticide be removed from inside the food? It cannot. So we have to understand that the society that is there needs to be taken care of and only then will we be able to improve the lot of everybody. And if so you need employ, you need to employ somebody, that person needs employment with you. So it's a 
full circle. So Parvati sat with um, Shiva one day and said, you know, there, there are so many varieties, Shudras, Vaishyas, this, that, everything. Let's make everybody equal. So Shiva on Women's Day turned around and said, I have to listen to what you're saying. And I grant you that wish. So he granted the wish and said, after two months, we will review the situation. Two months later, Parvati came running back to him and said, there is chaos in the world. Nobody wants to do any work. Everybody wants to lord it out and sit there. The whole world is collapsing. Please let's get all the people back to their various work, you know, uh, related uh, caste system or whatever it is. Let everybody do their bit of work and then the world will come back to normal. Somewhere we have to understand that every job needs to be done. Every job has a dignity. Each one of us must teach one something better to make their life better and in the bargain we will be able to make life better. You need to inspire everybody to participate in the city and in the locality. There's nothing so useless as a generalization and we need to understand that. It's amazing how much we need to know before we realize how much we don't know. And as I started working in the public sector and this was by the way, I'm a gynecologist, a fertility specialist, and to me, making you know a wholesome family is what was important to me over the last 20 years. I started uh, fertility, uh, learning fertility treatment in 1993, and it was great to help the family have a child. But as I came back to India from the Middle East in 2000, I started seeing that I must make a difference to the locality here. And I started with Maleshwaram because that was where I was born and brought up. From there, I said, what can I do to help the city? From there, I said, what can I do? Can I make a difference? And really, I found that engaging can make the difference. That's when I said, it's not an individual family that I want to change. I want to transform hundreds of families around Bangalore, help to make them better. If you look at the women, the women are the people who need to be empowered. The girl child, is coming up, is malnourished, is underdeveloped, becomes a mother, she is anemic, she is carrying a baby which then becomes anemic and it goes on to have a childhood which is deprived of good nutrition. The mother is not educated properly, the child is sent for tuition as the baby you know, is two year old, three year old because the mother cannot take care of the homework. So in every sector, you and I need to plug in to make life better for the Amadmi, to work together to make them, you know, more empowered so that they can all be part of the growth of the system. We need to do that and it is our responsibility and our duty to be able to help them to become better and better. When society becomes better, then all of us can become better and then actually you can sleep, you and I can sleep peacefully at home because the discrepancy between the haves and the have-nots must reduce. It must not become more and more as it has become in the last 65 years. So if we can make that happen, I'm sure it will be great. How can you now participate in the next two months? One, you can be part of the emailing campaign that we have. You can be part of Facebook, Meenakshi for Maleshwaram. You can connect with us. You can connect your friends with us. You can, you know, volunteer over the weekends. Come join us. You, we really understand our locality much more. We need to be environmentally friendly. We need to take care of our environment. Only then can we make life better for everybody. So in every way, you need to join. Good politics needs white money. We need small quantities of money from each one of you. If each one of you contributes some money for the campaign, then we will be able to. Otherwise, I am spending all the money from my savings. I have no regrets. To me, this is an investment that I am making into my future, into my children's future, and I'm not going to conk it in the next 40 years. I'm only 55 years old, and I believe that I will live till 95. So this is my investment into the future. Instead of just building another house, this is my investment for a better India, for a better future, for all of us, all inclusive. There is nobody who is excluded from the better future that we need to have. So today I believe that on Women's Day, let us empower every woman in the world 
to be a better person to be a better individual to be healthier and to bring up everybody because the woman is the one person who is the last person to eat in the house she will not eat till everybody is fed that is why the gramin bank worked so well because they gave you know loans to to the woman and she returned the money like no other person did so somewhere if we empower the 50% of the population the other 50% of the population is taken care of automatically because we always believe that we need to put everybody else in the family first so let's on this international women's day let's all you know put in our bit to make our country the best country in the world and i'm sure it can happen if all of us plug in thank you very much